Mahathir Mohamad has returned to his office at Padana Putra amid the political storm raging over the last two days. This comes a day after the 94-year-old resigned as Prime Minister with the Malaysian King accepting his resignation. Dr Mahathir is now interim Premier until a new PM has been appointed and a new cabinet formed. Aside from ministers, the duties of other members of the administration, including the Deputy Prime Minister, Deputy Ministers and Political Secretaries, ceased effective Monday. Here's a quick recap on how things unfolded yesterday, as told by our Asian News Network partner, The Star. Dr Mahathir submitted his resignation to the King at 1pm. And shortly after, Parti Pribumi Bersatu Malaysia President Muhyiddin Yassin announced Bersatu's exit from Pakatan Harapan. Parti Kaadilan Rakyat then confirmed that Azmin Ali and Zuraida Kamaruddin, together with nine other MPs, were sacked from the party. Close to 3pm, Dr Mahathir announced his resignation as Bersatu Chairman. He then headed to Istana Negara to discuss his resignation with the King. And at 6.20pm, news broke that his resignation had been accepted, although the King appointed him as Interim Premier. Now joining me now from Kuala Lumpur is Malaysia Bureau Chief Shannon Teo. Shannon, good to have you back. Now it's been a day <laughs> since uh, Dr Mahathir resigned. You know, uh, what has the immediate reaction been like and what ripple effects has his uh, resignation caused? Well, obviously, uh, when Mahdi resigned, uh, Malaysia had no government, um, but the king appointed him as interim prime minister. So there is still someone there who's uh, making sure that our government is still running. Um, the ripple effects have affected the entire country. People are talking whether state governments uh, will now fall. There is, to be clear, no ruling coalition. Pakatan Harapan is technically not the government anymore. Yeah. Um, so everyone is wondering what will the next government look like? Who will be in it? Will it be the Pakatan Harapan parties? Will it be more of the opposition parties? Uh, but the, the big question is what is Mahade himself thinking? Uh, he's kept, uh, been quite silent about uh, what his thoughts are on the matter himself. Uh, what we've been hearing about uh, what he might do is coming from uh, secondary sources, people speaking on his behalf, party officials, Pakatan Harapan officials, mm. even people in the opposition are saying that this is what Mahdi wants to do, this is what Mahdi wants to do. Right, now now Shannon, you know, let's zoom in a little bit on the uh, interim uh, PM position. You know, what exactly are the powers of that role? Is it essentially the same as a normal PM? Yeah, um, there isn't anything in the Malaysian constitution about interim prime minister. So the king, the Agong, has used his discretionary powers to appoint uh, Mahade. Um, using this uh, so-called term interim. I think all that the king means is that, of course, Mahdi cannot govern without a, a majority or a government behind him. But while uh, this situation is cleaning itself up, while we try to ascertain whether there can be a government to be formed or if we need to go into a snap elections, Mahdi is the guy in charge of his government. Mm. Um, that's all he needs. But um, the prime minister pretty much now, there's no such thing as an interim. He has all the same powers as a normal uh, prime mm. minister. It's just that uh, he would also understand by convention, he is interim. If he appoints a cabinet now, they might have to be appointed and step down in the next 10 days. So it mm. wouldn't really make much sense. Right. The work now is basically to figure out, does Malaysia have a government uh, moving forward or do we go into an election? Mm, right. Now, speaking of moving forward, you know, could Dr Mahathir return as full PM? Yeah, there's nothing stopping that from happening. In fact, that is uh, looks like the odds-on uh, eventuality. Most parties around the country have said that they are supporting Mahade to continue uh, mm. to govern, to, to continue as PM. Many have expressly said until the end of the term even. So that gives him another three years if, if that's the, the likelihood. Um, Mahade is actually now possibly even in a stronger position than when he was just leading Pakatan Harapan. It seems like he is the choice of Prime Minister for every party in the country. Now, you know, Shannon, um, let's backtrack a little bit. You know, Dr Mahathir's uh, relationship with uh, Anwar Ibrahim uh, as well as with UMNO, uh, could you give us some clarity on that? Well, of course, Mahdi and Anwar have been uneasy allies uh, coming into forming Pakatan Harapan. Mm -hmm. After winning the election, um, there's always been the question that he gets asked, the question that Anwar gets asked in every interview, practically every press conference, 
when are you stepping down, when is Anwar going to be Prime Minister. Now, um, that dynamic basically kind of led into what happened this weekend. On Friday night, they had a big showdown meeting for Pakatan Harapan, trying to uh, set a specific date for this handover, which uh, uh, Mahathir and his allies didn't want to do. Mm. Um, so we, we that actually set the stage for what happened in the weekend. As for Mahathir and Amno, Mahathir abandoned Amno because he accused the party of being uh, too corrupt, especially around the 1MDB scandal. Mm. He joined what was then the opposition to topple Amno. He succeeded. Um, so the idea that he wants to bring a corrupt party back into his government uh, mm. seems a bit strange. I think right. that um, his party, they have shown that they are willing to accept certain defectors, people that they s- perceive to be clean. Um, mm. At least 13 Amno MPs have already joined Mahade's party uh, since the last election. I, I think Mahade would be amenable to people joining his party if they are of the right caliber. But mm. dealing with Amno as an equal partner, I think that he has a, a problem um, moving forward on, on, on those terms. Um, so uh, that's his relationship with Anwar, that's his relationship with Amno. Mm. You know, politically, it is, uh, it is, I wouldn't just call it fragile, but it's delicate. Mm. Um, and so that has to, politicians have to find a way to work it out. Mm. Now, uh, Singapore's Deputy Prime Minister Heng Swee Kiat uh, weighed in on the situation in Malaysia earlier today, and here's what he had to say. We are monitoring the developments closely. I, it is a, a domestic matter, and I hope that the various parties will come to some agreement expeditiously. And we have many projects, you know, for instance, the RTS, the HSR, and uh, also we have set up a ministerial task force to come together to tackle the COVID-19 outbreak. There are many areas of cooperation between Malaysia and Singapore that we can pursue that we must pursue to strengthen one another and as well as to work together in ASEAN to maintain the unity and centrality of ASEAN. I'll, there will be an ASEAN Finance Minister's meeting uh, in uh, next month and I will be uh, going up to Vietnam for the meeting. Now Shannon, uh, on, on a final note, you know, what are some of the implications for Singapore with regards to the uh, developments in Malaysia? The, the Malaysian market is taking a beating due to the uncertainty. So things in Malaysia are pretty cheap in terms of stocks. And of course, the currency is falling as well. Um, maybe now is a good time to go to Johor and continue shopping. <laughs> but on a serious note, um, yeah, as as, as uh, Minister Heng was saying, that there are all these projects, all these different committees that have been set up. They are going to have to be frozen for the time being. I believe the HSR uh, deferment uh, ends this May. It's looking very dim now that Malaysia can, can meet the deferment. So I don't know how the two governments are going to go forward on, on that issue. But rest assured, the, the king is now interviewing every single MP to mm. see what they think, whether they support a particular candidate as prime minister or they feel that we should go for, for a snap election. So I don't think a conclusion is very far away. Um, the king will finish his interviews by the end of tomorrow. So that brings us up to Thursday we are likely to see some kind of uh, uh, conclusion or at least some kind of uh, progress mm. on this issue. Well, thank you so much uh, for your updates and insights, uh, Shannon. Uh, that was, of course, Malaysia Bureau Chief Shannon Teo. And keep up to date with the developments in Malaysia at straightstimes.com.